Thanks very much. Uh, kia ora, everybody. Uh, really good to be here today. Um, so I am hopefully won't put you to sleep with a government kind of talk. And um, so I'll just, I'll just uh, leap right into it. I am uh, leading this work program um, at the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment is originally all about attracting R&D investment to New Zealand. And we want to do this for a whole number of uh, reasons. Mostly um, we've got quite a high performing science system in New Zealand, but it could be so much more than what it is, particularly if it was really connected to key international players and, um, and more globally connected. So that we see this as being one way that we can kind of achieve that. Um, and it's also around building our um, reputation, building our internal capability, building the ability for really cool stuff to happen here in New, here in New Zealand. Um, and so we're starting from like an okay place. I mean, I think internationally <laughs> we're, we do all right in global rankings. Um, and some of the disadvantages that we always say about ourselves, like we're small and remote, actually if you turn those on their heads, they can be advantages in, in particular areas. So, um, but however, despite that, that little um, segue, I think we still need to take a really different approach to, to this. And, you know, we, we're known as being a really beautiful country full of sheep and hobbits, but we're not particularly known as being, you know, the place in the world that you would go to do your R&D. So how do we start to change that? And um, and I think the answer, and, oh, and another thing too, is that we don't have all of the standard tools in our toolkit that a lot of other countries that have really tried to claim the R&D space as being their own have. <laughs> Namely, we don't write big checks, generally speaking, um, to get people to come. So we've got to find ways that would be, and, and I think that's not a bad thing at all. I think that if you do write big checks for companies to come here, it's not really sustainable for the country. And the types of relationships that you'll attract won't be sticky. They'll leave, they'll follow the money trail when somebody else offers them a big check. So I don't think that's a, I don't think it's a bad thing that we don't do that. Um, but how would we start to think about this differently and play competitively on the global scale when we're not playing in that way? And I think the answer is perhaps to start building on the existing capability that we've got here in New Zealand and think about the environments that we want to build and having those be really enabling and really creative and have points of difference to other p places in the world. And if we do that right, we could create opportunities that are sufficiently interesting that overseas players will want to come because of what we've built here. And so that led me to the idea of this um, thing that I keep saying I'm going to think of a much better name for it, but um, at the moment I'm calling it a platform play. So kind of like a platform technology, but not. Um, kind of like a platform technology for government, maybe. But um, so what, what I mean when I say platform play is really an ecosystem level scheme that you would design so that it's kind of working to enhance or catalyze all of the key components of an ecosystem. So if you think about an ecosystem in a given area and what are the little, the Lego building blocks that you would need around it, what are they? And how can we as government help to catalyze that so that it goes to a whole new place? Um, and so, yeah, so that's the, that's the platform play. Um, and I think that if we do develop platform or take a platform play approach to this, Hopefully what we will come up with is something that would resonate with international companies and players um, at a much deeper level um, than the checkbook. <laughs> and not only that, but you, you end up building things that benefit New Zealand first and foremost. So um, in all of these types of ways, which I won't go through one by one. <laughs> um, so... The programme that I'm running, we've, we've picked a number of different priority areas to concentrate on, and these areas are ones that we either think that we've got some degree of competitive advantage in um, already, or they're areas that we don't, but we think that we could find a way to play a little bit differently than the rest of the, rest of the world. And so these are them there. Um, 
And for each one of these priority areas, what we're wanting to do is to have a platform play that would sit inside of them. And so we're thinking quite creatively about what those platform plays would be and how we would manage to make them be real <laughs> and to actually have some kind of effects. So um, one thing about the platform plays is that they're not, they've got to be market-led and they've got to be really relevant to the global um, scene. And so they're not just kind of like real things that we as government might traditionally think up, not to say bad things about government, but um, so so the idea for pla for future foods, um, this plant-based sources of protein, actually came because we had a number of companies come to us and say, you're New Zealand, you're clean and pure and green, you must be doing plant-based sources of protein, right? And I was thinking, <coughs> dairy, cows, <laughs> like, <laughs> no. And then I thought, well, why couldn't we? Why couldn't we do something that would enable New Zealand to put their hand up and, and do something quite bold and say, actually, we will be the number one place in the world for plant-based sources of protein. And, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I think what it does is it creates, um, it buys us a, a, a future, it buys us optionality, it buys us different ways of... Um, different exports, different ways of being, different ways of farming, all kinds of stuff. And there's all, it's not just about growing the protein and putting it into bags and shipping it offshore. It, we have to do that in the first instance to be part of the game, but it could be more than that. It can be all of the intellectual property around what you do with this to pr produce really innovative foods off the back of it. So, um, yeah, so I mean, plant-based sources of protein, it's a, it's a big mega trend, and so we started thinking about what do we have here in New Zealand right now that we could catalyse or that we could build, and what are the bits and pieces that we'd have to add, and how would we pull all of this together in a really sort of fresh, innovative way so that it's easy for outside players to come in and um, make a real difference. So here's my, um, my beautiful diagram of <laughs> plant-based sources of protein um, platform play. And if you think about um, there's, you think about the ecosystem, who would you want and what would be important? And I think having you know these, these uh, bigger companies, international firms and companies being here and being present for different aspects, whether it's part of the growing, whether it's part of processing, whether it's um, research and development, having some bigger com companies present is important. And how would we go about getting there? So we're, we've got a work program that that's, we are talking to some big players there. Um, having uh, commercial, having like R&D that's really of size and scale is important. And so at the moment we've got, um, there are a number of government mechanisms available for funding that are quite significant, I mean this could change this afternoon, <laughs> depending on what happens, but, but at the moment they are there, but what's not there is kind of this joined up bigger vision around, um, a, around pulling in other outside players to work with it, so get, you know, really, really big research programs going on. Um, the, the, eco, the startup ecosystem is super, super important, so having entrepreneurs, having startup companies, lots of them, way more than we've got now, bubbling away, and those, on, those startup companies could come from New Zealand sources, they could come from international sources. Um, so we need to find ways to try and encourage that. Same with investment. So we're wanting to see investment both from New Zealand and also from outside um, overseas players come in as well. Um, having a really enabling regulatory environment and making sure that our regulations are not only fit for purpose but are enabling so that it gives us an advantage there. It won't put us in a really risk, risky place where we'll hurt ourselves in the long run, but will be more enabling than what it currently is. Uh, I think that's a, an important component. Trying to get all of our research, which we've got quite a few research institutes across the country which are working in the space, but they're all working on their individual programs and they're all working on slightly different things and they don't talk to each other. So trying to get some alignment around that to get, again, scale would be really important. And it kind of goes on and on. I won't sort of go through all of them. Um, our international, I think, relationships that you could negotiate at a country-to-country -country level, I think would be quite important, and we're working on that one too. So, so it just sort of gives you the idea about the way that we're thinking about it. And we're going to, we've called it something, 
I even trademarked it the other day. <laughs> it's Future Foods New Zealand. <laughs> and um, so it will be a thing and um, we're going to be trying to get, you know, a lot more impetus for it to actually move and go ahead in the future. And then, um, so that's that. But then also one of the, the other priority areas is space. And this is a kind of a cool one too. <laughs> so this again started off market-led opportunity, um, presenting opportunity with Rocket Lab, coming to us and saying, we can launch rockets from New Zealand, can't we? And <laughs> we sort of said, well, sure, if we have a law. <laughs> but so inside of nine months, we uh, wrote all the regulatory um, systems, which is now a law. Um, and so it sort of shows that we can be nimble and flexible if we want to. Um, and we, uh, in the meantime, we regulated them by contract. Um, so I took quite an innovative approach there. Uh, had the first successful launch, um, gearing up for the second one. And now we're thinking, you know, way beyond that and thinking, you know, what are all the bits of the pieces in the value chain around a rocket launch company, but also in that wider uh, space ecosystem? And which of those components do we have here? Which could we facilitate? Which could we grow? Which could we partner with? And um, how do we sort of create a new space hotbed in New Zealand? Um, so I think that's, um, oh, and the digital, this one has sort of been doing my head in a little bit, but um, that's all I've got. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's a thing or not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, keen to talk to people about that one. <laughs> anyway, I'm... Uh, that's all I have to say. Um, so I'm here all day. I'd love to talk to you guys. I think a really good um, outcome would actually be to have people like you guys involved in these platform plays. So I'm um, super keen to, to hear any ideas or um, to, to chat. So thank you very much for having me. Kia ora. <laughs>